What's good, Wizards fans? It's your host, the real Ed Oliver, Brandon Scott, and today we're we're gonna talk about could Jordan Poole be the point guard for next season. Also, we're gonna preview the Pistons game and also get to a couple of comments. So let's get to it. You are locked on Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. So I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Wizards your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And it's your host, Ed Oliver and Brandon Scott. Um, so we're going to talk about Jordan Poole and if he will be the point guard of for uh, next season and the foreseeable future or who possibly could be the point guard. You know, who knows what's going to happen with Tyus. Um, Tyus hasn't played the last couple of games. So it kind of looks like he he may be traded or yeah. probably just go to a different team. Of course, you got the draft, you know, Rob Dillingham, um, Reed Shepard, some other guys. Yeah. Uh, I know Topic is more of a uh, combo guard. So it's kind of like, you know, are you really going to find your point guard of the future in the draft next year? So that's a big question mark, too. But since Jordan Poole has been playing so well, uh, who do you think will be the starting point guard next year if you had to pencil that in? Man, you brought up a lot and then, of good points. And then Jared Butler has been playing well, too. So, you know, I'll yeah. give him a small chance. Um, you brought up a lot of good points as far as the draft. Uh, Rob Dillingham is definitely uh, an option in, through the draft. But let's start with this. Yes, I do. I do think that he could be the point guard of the foreseeable future. The reason for that is, you know, um, the move coming over from Golden State, we knew that he had the talent to be that score in his league. He played in his league. Um, being six-man with the Warriors, we know that he can be a high volume score. Um, he took his bumpers, bruises, you know, he took his trials and tribulations. He took his elders here, you know, he kept working, he kept working, he kept working. He dealing with the booze, dealing with the criticism, dealing with all these different factors. And he worked his tail off. And that alone tells me that he has the drive to do this. You know, he, he could definitely be the franchise point guard. Um, just like I think that Denny could be the number one scoring option next year. Those are two things I think that can definitely happen next year, depending on what's going on with Kyle Kuzma. Um, Tyus Jones, you know, is he talented enough to do a side and trade? I don't think so, man. I mean, I mean, he's kind of. I, I think we just he just he just leaves. I, I mean, maybe. I mean, there was talk that that maybe they will sign him to a team friendly deal, but I don't see the point. I think that you know, if you look at Poole's age, his skill set, give him a chance. Because, like you said, in the draft, Rob Dillingham has shown a lot of promise being that guy. Um, Reed Shepard is more of a combo. Uh, Topic, I do like Topic and his athleticism, but. He can't shoot, and that's going to be one fact to look at. You know, having a point guard that can't shoot, um, and then you look at Isaiah Collier. You know, USC has kind of had an up and down season, so his 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 draft stock has gone up and down, and we'll we'll see. Because uh, right now he doesn't screen franchise point guard. Right now he's kind of a developmental piece, obviously. Um, so, not to say he's not talented, but to me, Jordan Poole should be the option to be the point guard of the future, in my opinion, because he's shown that he can drive the lane. I mean, he can collapse defenses. If we can find, you know, get these other guys involved, which he's done. His assist numbers have went up. So if he can utilize these shooters on the outside, whether it's Kispert, you know, Denny, his three-point shot. I mean, look, shooting 40, around 40% this year. I mean, as far as, you know, um, the last 20 games. So, you know, utilize the shooters on the outside like John Wall. Because, look, people forget that John Wall made his money with his speed. You know, his ability to drive the lane and score at will in the paint and collapse defenses, you know, he utilized shooters on the outside, whether it was Bradley Bill, whether it was, you know, Otto Porter Jr., and he made his money off of that. And I can see that with Jordan Poole because, like I said uh, last night, he there's moments where he reminds me of John Wall. Just with his speed, his ability to drive the lane, he's crafty in the paint. You know, his, you know if he can definitely get his assist numbers up, definitely work in the vision, which – it really isn't a problem, really. I, I'm not gonna say work on it because some of these passes, I mean, are on point. You know, his vision is is, is right where you want it to be. So, yeah, I think he's gonna be the point guard of the future. Now, there's a lot of factors. Does he want to be the point guard of the future in DC? You know, does he see DC as a long term home? Which is definitely a question I plan on asking him. You know, do you plan on being here long term or are you just passing through? You know, because the organization has said this season that they look at him as an asset to trade. So, you know, with him playing the way he is, his values went up. So. They can still flip him, maybe get a first-round pick because 
right now he's shown that he can play at a high level and the right team and the right fit he should be able to go in there and be the right piece in my opinion but look if he likes it here if he wants to be that guy he can be because in my opinion he could play basketball he is a heck of a player who he's definitely improved and to me you know physical talent and playing you know basketball as a player is one aspect the mental part of is, is important to me you know because a lot of young guys man they can't take criticism they can't take l's because you know they collapse you know, they can't handle the pressure he i can't imagine too many young guys go from a championship team and go to a rebuilding team and get booed by your own fans in year one and you get criticized by every media outlet um, including ours, we gave him a lot of smoke, which at the time he deserved <laughs> it. You know what I mean? He he deserved it at the time, but he worked his tail off. Even you know, wasn't happy going to six man, but he performed, and he worked his way. And what I ain't gonna say work his way because size is hurt, but he's taking advantage of his moment in the limelight as being that point guard. So to me, with his work ethic, with his skill set, with his age, and the fact he hasn't hit his um his peak yet, I think that he should, he could definitely be. The franchise point guard but then you know looking at that i still stand by behind the fact that i still think that Denny needs to be in the one option next year so i think there's a lot of problems with this team as far as age you know if he wants to stay here man this is a heck of a foundation to build upon when you got jordan Poole, Denny avia Corey kispert and black Bali. so that's where i'm at man i think that if he wants to be here man the rebuild shouldn't have to take too long in my opinion mm-hmm yeah, seeing Denny as a number one option that 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 is interesting we play he's played he's had a heck of a season he's improved uh, the big factor in that, of course, is is Kuzma gonna go? Is yeah, going to, is yeah. he gonna be back? Are they gonna find a trade partner for him in the off season? That possibly could happen. I think that's actually that may that I, I don't know which one's more likely, Kuzma being traded in the off season or Tyus. That one's a tough one. Uh, but you know, we'll see what happens with that. But I think that's a big factor in Denny being a number one option. And then Jordan Poole, you know, he was the number one option clearly last night because he was super super high at thirty eight points. Yeah. He he just he just had the high hand, so you had to give him the ball. Uh, should have got the ball a little bit more towards the end, in, in my opinion, too. But as far as being point guard, yeah, I think you know he might as well be that number one guy. He might as well be that point guard. He might as well be the guy bringing the ball up. He's just been better so far bringing the ball up. I did look up some numbers because I, I keep I kept saying that you know he was bad whether he was the point guard or not, and it wasn't just him being the point guard. It was him just having the ball in his hands. Yeah, you know, yeah. Bring it whether it was bringing it up or just having the ball in his hands. He was just he was just bad in the first half of the season. But I am looking at some numbers now. He only played. He's only played point guard twenty one percent of the time, obviously because Tyus has been the point guard, and then Jordan has been the two guard, and then coming off the bench, he's been more the point guard. But there have been times where he's been more the primarily primary ball handler, not a point guard, but being the primary ball handler as the two guard on the floor with Tyus. Yeah. Now he's just playing better, regardless. But he has been playing better too out there being the point guard orchestrating the offense. And uh, with an interview last night, um, I want to say it was Bijan Talk asked him about you know him playing out there without Tyus, and um, you know he's just been able to get the ball, bring up, read the defense, uh, or kind of read where the traps are coming from, doubles or wherever where they've been blitzing him. And he he has been better against physicality too. That was somewhere he was struggling where guys were just pushing him around, pushing him off yeah. the line, coming off screens. So he's just improved with any aspect of his game. But yeah, as far as we both brought up the draft. Um, Rob Dillingham, he's more of a combo guard. Same thing with Reed Shepard. He's a combo yeah. guard. Topic struggles to shoot. I see Stefan Castle from UConn. He's an option out there. He's more of a combo guard, too, as a yeah. Collier. So guys like that. But I think Jordan Poole, yeah. I, I think starting day one, I think for the first game of the season next year, I think he should be the starting point guard. I do think they should try to find a uh, trade partner for Tyus, whether it's two second-round picks, three second-round picks. I think they just got to move him at this point. Great player. I like Tyus. I'm a fan of his game. I think he did a great job while he's been here. But I, I think they just got to find an asset for him. And if, if they don't, then I think he wants to go back. I, I would assume he wants to go back to a playoff team. But I think Ty, I think Jordan Poole's done a great job playing as the point guard this second half of the season. Uh, him being there next year as the starting point guard, I think would be great. He's uh, done a great job with Sean Holmes and um, Bagley, getting them, getting those guys a ball. Him and Kuzma are starting to have better chemistry and play better together. Yeah. Corey Kispert, they they um the, the game where they beat the Bulls, those two are super hot. They've been playing well off of each other. So uh he just looks more comfortable out there too. You look at the Warriors too when he was had the ball in his hands as the point guard coming off the bench for Steph. Um that's when he was cooking. That's when he got to do his thing where he could freelance, kind of you know, that that and one mixtape kind of style where he likes to cross guys up. He's starting to do that a lot more, and he's playing his game. So 
Um, those are some huge ways he's improved. And I, I just don't see them bringing in another guy, of course, at the point guard position that would be better than him at this point. And I brought up Jared yeah. Butler. I think he'd be great off the bench behind yeah. Jordan Poole. He's been doing yeah. a great job coming off the bench, too, had 13 assists in that big win that we had. Or I'm not going to say big win, but a good win that we had. So I do think as far as right now, I think he would be great as the starting point guard next year. I mean, I have I have nothing but good things to say about him as of late. 38 points, 31 points another game, 20 points. He, he's doing what he came in here to do. And, um, you know, a lot of people give him a hard time, including us, Kevin Garnett, of course. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's playing with a lot of confidence. So um, it, 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 it's, it, it's great to see from him from that standpoint. So. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens with Denny as far as um, giving him the keys next year. But I think Jordan Poole right now uh, would be great as, as that start point guard. Yeah, I agree, man. I think Jordan Poole, if he wants to, could be that guy. You know, definitely give him the keys because we got to have a heck of a young foundation here. Like I said, and you know, looking at Jordan Poole, he hasn't even hit his peak yet. And you look at it, look at Lucky, you saw his ceiling last night. That's his ceiling. He could definitely be that high volume scorer. Like I said, if he can definitely be that guy with his passing man and get everybody involved i mean denny broke you know he broke it out here you know he's another good piece Corey kisper's another good piece but a lot of is a great piece i mean you know you have a heck of a young foundation here i mean and you hit the nail on the head as far as point guard you don't necessarily have to go out there and try to develop a combo guard into a point guard you got a point guard you know you can go get best player available like Risache, uh, which he could play the four and the three. He man, right now he's been in the number one pick in a lot of boards, man. Uh, Zachary Risache, man. Uh, Alex Sar is another option where he could play the four. So, you know, Kyle Kuzma, big fan of him, man. I've enjoyed him in DC, man. But I think this is definitely the time in this draft to package him with that deal, get back in the lottery, and find a couple of high ceiling prospects because we got a good young foundation here and build upon that, and the rebuild can actually start. So, Jordan Poole, man, I, he, he's impressed me and. Just not only the physical part of playing basketball, but the mental. He took his mm -hmm. L's and he kept them moving. He kept working, and that's what you, that that is the fortitude that you want to see from a prospective franchise cornerstone. Right, hundred percent. Looking at some of the numbers, so over the last seven games since Tyus Jones has been out, uh, pool started in each game. He's averaged thirty-one minutes, twenty-one points a game, five assists, three boards, and one steal. Shooting forty-six percent from the field, thirty-seven percent from three, which is pretty darn good, and ninety-five percent from the free throw line. Where earlier. He was shooting like 30% from the three, 36% from the field. He was just awful. You know, he was struggling. But um, now a lot of shots are starting to fall. He's getting to the basket. There were times where he just wasn't even getting to the basket. Yeah. Now he's easily getting to the basket, scoring, yeah. finishing through contact, getting in ones. Mid-range game is working. Like, everything is working for him right now. And he's playing like the guy that uh, – where it's like, okay, this guy can get the keys and, and possibly a cornerstone. It's still, of course, a big question mark as far as that. But right now he's playing really good ball, and he looks like a guy that we can definitely uh, build build upon or eventually if he does get traded, they can get something for him. So, all right, but we're going to get to a couple comments here. But before we do that, today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guarantee Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guarantee Fit only available to U.S. customers. And also, today's episode is brought to you by the 24-7 Locked On NBA stream, or Locked On stream. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day all right so we'll probably read one or two comments here that we didn't get to um t bass says Kyle, guy seems like when there's no rashawn holmes there's no win so they actually came up with the injury report rashawn holmes is going to be out tomorrow night so that means a lot more playing time for marvin bagley 
Uh, I think that is something to take a look at on FanDuel if you want to look at his rebounds, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, over. Yeah. Or his points over too, because he's going to get more playing time. So that's just a little nugget that I'll probably give out. That might be my play of the day, just going with Marvin Bagley's points or his rebounds or just points, rebounds, and assists. Uh, so that is that is a good comment by T Baz. No homes, no wins. So we'll see if that affects <laughs> the game tomorrow against the Pistons. Do we lose because Rashawn Holmes is not there? <laughs> it's gonna be a tough game, man. It's a battle to number one pick. Right. <laughs> um, I like to see a lot more time for Vucevic. I think this is the time to That's get him on, uh, some minutes off the bench, man, to see what he can do. Uh, but Marvin Bagley, man, you know, he's just been incredible for us this year. Um, you know, with his ability to stretch the floor, you know, he rebound numbers that you know, the rebounding competency has gone up for this team. They've become a better team rebounding wise, especially, you know, throwing in Rashawn Holmes. He's he's played really well because he's played above expectations, in my opinion. I didn't know what to expect. Coming over from Dallas, you know, at this point in his career, you know, he didn't show too much in Dallas. Uh, he didn't show that that potential he showed in Sacramento, but he's been pivotal. You know, him and Marvin Black, uh, Marvin Bagley, man. So uh, we'll see. Uh, I think I don't think the team's going to hinge on whether Rashawn Holmes is there or not. I think it's just it's going to be a, like I said, a battle between two teams that are kind of in the same spot, uh, franchise wise. But Rashawn has been big for this team. Don't don't get it twisted, man. These wins we've gotten, this three game mm-hmm. winning streak, and, and even this last game where we lost. You know, staying in the game that had a lot to do with Rashawn Holmes. Obviously, he, he was hurt last game, but this three game winning streak had a lot to do with Marvin Bagley and Rashawn Holmes. Mm-hmm. All right, William Lee said, I love John Wall's ability to pass and finish at the rim, but his jumper was horrible, all caps. So, yeah, yeah, John Wall was was great here, uh, multi time all star. Yeah. Um, put the team on the map for sure. Got us to the playoffs. Of course, the big shot against Boston, uh, some of the blocks off the backboard, the bind the back, uh, dunk on Schroeder in Atlanta. <laughs> I mean, there's so many moments you can talk about uh, beating the Bulls in the first round where him and Brad jump up in the air and you see yeah, the picture of Kirk Heinrich where Kirk Heinrich is upset, you know, because they just lost to us, sweeping the Raptors yeah. uh, in Toronto. I mean, John Wall was huge in that. I mean, spoon feeding Gortat, spoon feeding uh, Otto, guys like that, getting guys paid, getting guys contracts. Yeah. I mean, you just go on and on and on about how good John Wall was, made all defense team as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, but um, yeah, and, and talk about your comparison with Jordan Poole and John Wall. Of course, they're they're different players. They they have their different styles, but yeah, they both can get to the rim, of course. And then John Wall is just a superior athlete. But I definitely see how you're talking about where Jordan Poole can get downhill and get to the basket when he's playing that point guard position. And then also in his interview, he was saying when he's playing point guard, the defense isn't able to load up as much on him because he's trying to score and get downhill and create that advantage. And that's something that John Wall was able to get, do at point guard, just get downhill, downhill, downhill yeah. all the time. And that's something that Jordan Poole has certainly been able to do that. He was not able to – he just wasn't doing it at the beginning of the season. But, um, yeah, that comment by William Lee, yeah, John Wall's ability to pass and get to the rim was just an elite. It was incredible. It was fun to watch. I miss those days, man. You know, this team being so bad, yeah. And losing so many games. People used to complain about the Wizards at the time and complain about John Wall and Bradley Bill about them, of course, not getting over the hump. Yeah. But honestly, and they never got past the second round, which is unfortunate. But honestly, I would take that over this any day of the week. The, the John Wall days when you know we were really flourishing. Yeah. I would take those days any day of the week, of course. Yeah, all it took was Paul George trade there, Ernie. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, looking at John Wall, man, my favorite wizard of all time. Easy. I mean, just because he was electrifying. I mean, you know, he couldn't shoot. You know, his a consistent jump shot was definitely his shortcomings as far as a player, man. But I mean, he was just speed, his passing, just I mean, the dog, man, that dog in the man. You know, just he's my favorite wizard of all time. And my trinity is Gilbert Arenas, John Wall, Bradley Bill. But, you know, looking at Jordan Poole, the comparison is, you know, going downhill. But Jordan Poole's already a better shooter. So that's what I'm saying. He could be a very impactful player as far as being that guy in D.C. because he's already short of deficiencies that John had, which is that shot. Now, obviously, you know, with that shot, he can he make those shots? Yes, he's got to work on utilizing the shot clock. That comes with being a point guard. Utilize the shot clock. We cannot have these uh, transition threes, man. (laughs) You know, we just can't have it. You know, we got to, you know, he's got to learn how to run, you know, Call plays, run plays, you know, be that floor general, man. If he really wants to be that guy as, as far as being point guard in D.C., you know, he's got to bring all the other parts of being a point guard. You know, you, because if you look at his league, man, uh, in his league, man, you know, score score first point guards, you know, they're okay for rebuilding teams, but eventually you need to pair them up with somebody else because, you know, a, a score first point guard 
you know, is not going to, in my opinion, and if you look at the NBA, it's not going to lead you to a championship. It's not going to happen, man. I mean, if you you need a point guard who, yeah, can score, but who can get other people involved. So, I mean, John Wall, you know, he, his ability to get other people involved was his, was his money, man. You know, his passing was just <laughs> electrifying. And, I mean, let's not forget what he did off the court. I mean, this dude was out here buying lunches for kids to go to school, clothes, book bags, supplies. I mean, this guy was doing stuff that, you know, quite frankly, people in Charlotte and DZ should have been doing. I mean, this dude was taking his time and taking care of people in the community. So he will always be loved and re- always be respected for that, man. And the same thing with Brad, you know, what he was doing when, you know, pivotal time in, in the United States with a lot of the, you know, shootings and stuff like that. You know, you know, he did a lot. He did a lot in D.C., man. Uh, Gil, I don't <laughs> want to see him too, too much, but <laughs> it is what it is. But um, no, those two men will always be loved because of what they did off the court, man, because D.C. as a city has always been uh, kind of we're always in the shadow of cities like New York and Philly being on the East coast. And, you know, we don't always get the love that other cities get, man. And to see those guys do a lot, what they did off the court and macking it and love it. So yeah, Jordan Poole, he has the opportunity to be that guy. If he wants to be, I mean, he's not, he has, he's not even close to his peak yet and he's looking, looking what he can do. So you show that with the, the young guys that I mentioned before, Kisper, Denny and Bilal, and you build upon that in the draft, this is going to be a nice young team in a couple of years, man. And I, I think that if he wants to be that guy, he can definitely shorten his rebuild. So, but yeah, John, could you imagine John Wall with a consistent shot? Good Lord. <laughs> You're right, 100%. Um, there's another comment where uh, Red Wings 01 says, I wish Johnny worked out, but it is what it is. You're going to give a guy, you want to give a guy, you spend a top 10 pick on as many chances as possible, but at some point you have to acknowledge when you miss on a pick. He also says, I would still give Johnny big minutes for the rest of the season just to see if anything happens, but yeah, he's probably done. Uh, I kind of I basically agree with Will with Red Wings zero. I hate to say that he's done, but I do agree with there's no there's nine games left, so just give him 20, 20 to twenty five minutes a game. And um, you know, as far as his future, I do think that it probably won't work out here, to be honest. Um, but nah. yeah, and I think that uh, the other guys we talked about this a couple times: Jules Bernard, Champagne, yeah. Jared Butler, clearly have just been more impactful than him, and they've. Look like they developed quicker than him, even though they're, they're a little bit older. Jerry Butler's a little bit older. Um, Champagne's a little bit older. I want to say I, I gotta re, I gotta make sure I'm, I'm right on that, but I feel like those guys. Were, Jules Bernard might actually be the same age, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, most the, most of those guys are coming from the G League program, and they're they're more impactful. They've had more impact on w- actual wins as well. So um, I mean, it just found, sounds like the same thing a, a different day with Johnny, and we'll see what he does tomorrow. I mean, and Johnny Davis, man, um, I always hope any young player succeeds, man. But then you got to be a realist. I mean, you got to be 100. The guy's averaging, what, one point a game? I mean, as, as much smoke as we gave Jan Vesely. Jan Vesely averaged 4.7 ga- points a game. <laughs> like, like, like mm-hmm. what are we talking about? You know, he's probably – look, I hate to say this, but I'm going to – he's probably one of the worst rookies we've ever had in this organization. Let's mm-hmm. be real. Look at uh, – all right, Jan Vesely. Let's see, 2011 to 2012, averaged 4.7 points a game. And four and a half rebounds. I mean, second year, 2.5. And, I mean, we know you know, Vesley ain't never going to get an award as most approved player. But let's be real. He's probably going to go down as one of the worst rookies we've ever had. And you can point at whoever it was, you know, at fall for it. But the fact of the matter is, this man's jump shot is ugly to watch. I mean, it's just he's not he's not ready to be in the NBA, in my opinion. You know, he's a G League player. And like I said, I hope, I hope that he can figure it out. But, I mean, how much hope are you really looking for, man? I mean, we're in year two. Year two, and he's still trying to figure out how to shoot the basketball. Nah, man. I mean, he's 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 done. I, I, I hate to say it, but he is. He's, at year two, you still trying to figure out how to shoot the ball? I mean, nah. He, he, he's probably gonna be in the G League, and he's probably gonna be in the G League with another organization. That's just being a hundred. I mean, he's mm-hmm. done. I mean, you know, you're a tenth overall pick, man, and you just you got other benches laughing at you. I mean, because your shot is so dag on ugly. I mean, it's ugly. Well, no, there was the guy uh, from Portland. I think his name oh, was Moses Brown. Uh, Moses Brown. Moses yeah, Brown. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was terrible. That he shot made Johnny look like um, daggone Reggie, Reggie Miller. Miller man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I'm telling you. So, yeah, I mean, look, I hope he keeps working, man. I hope he finds another chance. I really do. I hope he figures it out. And I hope he finds, you know, a way to have an NBA career, man. But, me personally, I've seen enough. I mean, we we we've given so much smoke as a fan base to guys like Young Vesley, guys like Chris Singleton, 
And if you look at the stats, they perform more than he has. So we mm. got to, you know, you get to a point where it's like, oh, I hope he does. But, you know, look, look, 10th overall, you ain't performed yet. It's time to move on, in my opinion. So that's where I'm at with Johnny. Uh, so I, so uh, we'll get into a preview. And we're going to talk about the, you know, the Wizards officially are staying in the nation's cap. So we're going to talk about that. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by Nissan. So are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. So there are three great products that Nissan has right now. The, new, the 2024 Nissan Rogue, the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder, and the 2024 Nissan Armada. So I'm going to switch it up today because I'm very biased with the Pathfinder. Uh, the 2024 Nissan Armada will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Nissan Armada. So take the 2024 Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And tonight's episode is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, yes, sir, or college base basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive in to all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, the NBA, Major League Baseball, and I'm just saying Corbin Burns, 11 strikeouts today, I'm just saying, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out the Fire TV channels app on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. So to learn more, all you got to do is visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Yes, sir. So I guess quickly, cause we are at um 27 minutes, but uh, what are your thoughts on updates that uh, it is not the wizards will be staying in DC. I know we talked I, about it last, uh, I want to say two episodes ago. Yeah, yeah. I think we both knew it, man. We both knew that the, the writing was on the wall, that he was here to stay. I mean, they, they formally signed it to where he's going to get the $500 million. They're going to have to, you're going to be able to renovate not only the Capital One Arena, but the following, the, the surrounding area, which is, I think is a really good idea, not only for the Wizards, um, but for the, for the city of D.C., man. Um, definitely revitalizing the city of D.C. and getting it straight. So I think we both kind of knew it was going to happen. Now, I thought it was kind of goofy, man. Like, <laughs> everybody's, like, smiling like they knew it. Like, a month ago, you guys were, like, at each other's throat. Now it's like, man, you know, oh, it's, you know, it's all love now. So it just – I thought that was funny to, to see that. But, I mean, I think it's a good move until Leon's part, man. Uh, keep, the, keep the team in D.C., uh, put some money into the surrounding area. Um, because – I think it's a win-win for not only him, but also the, the city of D.C. So I think it's a mutual relationship where both can definitely get something out of it. And we all, as a fan base, and actually, you know, people in the DMV, we all can prosper. So I think they deserve to be in D.C. So I think it's a good move by Ted Leonsis. I think it's a good move by Mira Bowser. Both of them have come under a lot of scrutiny from different sources. So I think it's a good move by both of them to keep them in D.C. Yeah, I think so, too. I think it's, this, is, this is where they belong. It's a good venue. Yeah, it's a good spot. It's easy to commute to. It's easy. It's very metro accessible as well. Um, uh, the building that all they got to do is do the updates. They, you know, he's supposed to get what five hundred million dollars to make upgrades yeah. to the building. Uh, like I said, it's not like FedEx where it's, it's just old and you know you got <laughs> water sewage coming out the ceiling. Like you know, it's it's not bad. The seats aren't bad. Like at FedEx, of course, you barely got any room. I think I feel like a Capital One, you got a little bit of wiggle room. Me as my as a tall guy myself, of course, I feel like there could be a little bit better leg space, but I mean the seats are fine. Yeah. Um, the lighting in the building is good. Like the, we have, I think feel like we have the, the best lighting in the arena. You got the uh, Ultra Lounge, you got the Hennessy Loft seats, you got the seat behind, you got the place, the section behind the basket where you stand up. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got what Caesar Sportsbook in there or the uh, restaurant. Yeah. And uh, you got places you can go after. You got nightlife, different things like that. So I, I think it's a good a good venue. Of course, you know, we talked about some of the crime and whatnot. 
that's been going on and McDonald's closed, but they are opening up a Chick-fil-A over there, if I'm not mistaken. So you got some good things. They got Clyde's over there. I mean, there's the, they got um, a lot of places to eat over there. And, you know, Clyde's, the owner said that they were closed because if if Capital if, the, if they left and the Mystics would stay there, if the Wizards left, then Clyde's would mostly likely close down. A lot of places were saying that, too. So it's just good for business, just adding life. You know, Abe Poland did a, did a good job, you know, revitalizing Chinatown and whatnot. So it's good to see that that it keeps going, that Chinatown um, stays busy and stays alive, you know. So it's good to see that. Um, and maybe, you know, we'll see if the commanders move over to D.C. Maybe that can inspire them to move to D.C. And, um, you know, it, it became very polit- – not became political, but it, it was always political, always political. Oh, yeah, and uh, the uh, senator or whoever she is, she was very happy. She posted a meme that she blocked, helped block the move to Virginia. So, um, you know, we know how that, uh, we know how Puerto can get and things like that. And Yunkin was very happy. They had the whole presser at the beginning. Now he's not happy, of course, because they're not going to be able to move to Virginia. So uh, I'm happy they understand in D.C. Yeah, I am too. It, like you said, it had highlighted this so how much of a clown shit was. With, like, I mean, right. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into it. But, right. um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know what? Uh, and by the way, they did open up that Chick Fil A, man. Because last time I was over there, mm-hmm. man, I saw it was open, man. So I'm definitely looking forward to that because I love some right, Chick Fil A. Right, right. But <laughs> um, but now nah, I put some money into the surrounding area. You know, a lot of people get into crime, and I get it. You know, DC, there's an issue of crime and char- carjacking right now. But there's an issue in Philadelphia too, in, in New York, and in Cleveland. You know, this, look, it's a big city. It is when you know it, it is what it is. Just you know, every big city's got its plus and minus, especially once you get closer in the center of the city. So DC is not that much more dangerous than any other city I've been to. And I, Lord, I've been to some cities. I've been to Memphis. I haven't been to Little Rock. No, <laughs> DC's all right. So um, no, it's good to see them stay in DC. And like I said, I do want to see them put a lot more money into Chinatown. Uh, but I think it's a win-win. It's, it's good to see them now. Like you said, next stop is let's get the commanders over there to. Uh, to the old spot. So, you know, definitely looking forward to that. But, you know, it, it's a good move by both parties because um, both Mario Bowser and Ted Leonsis, they've gotten a lot of smoke, man. But both of them, man, they, I think it's a good move by both of them. So I, I applaud them. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's look at the Detroit Pistons here. Uh, the Wizards play the Pistons tomorrow night in the battle for the best lottery pick with the best lottery odds. Uh, the Pistons are just awful. I mean, let's just be real. The Wizards have been bad this year, too, so it's not like I can talk a lot of trash. Um, remember, Kuzma said, don't be that team. They ended up don't being be that, that team. team. <laughs> to the Pistons, uh, Pistons are 25th in points per game, 29th in personal fouls, so they foul a lot, 29th in turnovers. In turnovers, they turn the ball a lot, turn the ball over a lot. They do steal the ball. They don't steal the ball a lot, actually. They're 30th in steals, so they, they don't get a lot of steals. Uh, 27th and three pointers are attempted, so they don't shoot a lot of threes. They're 27th and three point percentage as a team, so they're a bad three point shooting team. Uh, let's see what else, where else do they rank? Uh, three point defense, they're pretty good. They're eighth, three point defense, yeah. fifth, and um, three points uh, attempted against. They're pretty good in that category. Offensive rebound, they're a good rebounding team. They're 10th in rebounds, probably because of Jalen Duran. They got James Wiseman, who's a good rebounder, too. So they got a good amount of Isaiah Stewart. Yeah. Who's out for the season? Uh, so they rebound the ball well, and that's really it. Defensively, they're 27, so they're a bad defensive team. They're 26 in offensive range, so they're a bad offensive team. They're just not a. They're just not a good. They do have talent though. Kay Cunningham is talented. I love Jalen Duran. He was drafted after Johnny, so I'm not going to go down that road because at the time, in hindsight, it's not like we were looking for a yeah. big man because we have players and Gafford. So I'm not going to say all that, but I, I'm a big fan of Jalen Duran's game. I'm a big fan of Jay Nivey's uh, game. Jay Nivey, he actually uh, – he might not play, but uh, Cunningham should play. He he had 32 against the Timberwolves. Jalen Duran had 11 points, 11 boards. Um, Troy Brown Jr., the former Wizard, he is on. And, uh, of course, James Wiseman has been playing as well. He had 11 points and four boards. So what are your thoughts about the Detroit Pistons in the game tomorrow? Ooh, <laughs> I mean, I think it's gonna be close. <laughs> uh, Bagley I'm, revenge game. Bagley was on the Pistons too. I forgot about that. Well, that's a big matchup I'm looking at making. Jalen Duran has been he's had a really good year, man, especially mm-hmm. rebounding, but in points in the paint. So that's a battle I'm looking at. Uh Kate Cunningham and Jordan Poole. That's another battle I'm looking at. But I think the biggest thing to look at is um small forward and power forward for the Pistons. I mean, these two guys, I mean, uh Simone Fontacecchio. He's out, mm-hmm. so they're probably going to play Evan Fournier at the three. 
I think that's a good matchup for Denny. I think Denny should definitely be very, very aggressive on the offensive end and definitely get in his face on the defensive end. But at power four, they got – I can't even pronounce his god name. I mean, Tosan – eh, bu- mm, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> so I mean – I, I think there's an opportunity for Kyle Kuzin to, to really get have a really good night against him, man, because, like I said, I don't even know who the guy is. So I think mm-hmm. it's just, it's definitely a winnable game, it, you know, and we definitely need this win before we get into the next phase, these last seven games, man, because these last seven games are going to be brutal for this team. So very winnable game, and I'm going to say we win this game at home. I'm going to say that we – I haven't done this all year long, man, but I'm going to call it as a 108-101 to 101 victory. Yeah, I got them one and two. It's unfortunate because – they really could have had a five game winning streak. Yeah. <laughs> and that would have been just funny to see after how bad of a season that how many losses they've had. But I got them winning to um just the basic things. I want to see Jordan Poole continue to do what he's doing. And uh Johnny Davis, if he can just play with some confidence out there too. The other guys, I think they've been pretty consistent. Like, like Denny's been pretty consistent. Corey, can he redeem himself after missing that free throw? Yeah. They're not shooting the ball well. How does he respond to you know, kind of having a nightmare. Not a nightmare game, but just like, you know, if you make the free throw, does the game go differently? You know, how does he respond to that? And I think he's a great player, so I think he'll he'll have a bounce back game. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, I'm just looking at the other guys too, like Champagne, how does he play? Jared Butler, just evaluating these guys for the last nine games. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a winnable game. I have us winning this game, man. So, it, you know, like I said, it's the, it's the battle of the two perspective number ones man so it's definitely gonna be something to watch man but there's a lot of good matchups like i said um this year is not measured by wins and losses it's measured by the progression of the young guys and i think that we have a good we have to give a lot of credit to these young guys denny Corey, you know blau before he got hurt jordan Poole. we have a heck of a foundation to build upon man so you know you definitely see the light at the end of the tunnel man I, you know I'm, I'm very very intrigued by this team going forward to be honest with you yes sir all right, we're going to wrap it up there. We just want to thank you guys for listening and making uh, Locked On was your first listener every day. We are free and available wherever you guys get podcasts. Make sure you guys subscribe. Hit the notification bell as well. Uh, my fan duel picks for tomorrow. I'm going to just say Jalen Duran, double-double yeah. for sure. And over on his points, rebounds, and assists. And then I'm going to go with Bagley, too, over on his points, rebounds, and assists. I'm going to take a look at both big men for that game. And then I'm going to go with Corey Kispert uh, making more than two and a half threes and uh, Jordan Poole, he might he, he might have another big game too. So I'll take a look at him. But my favorite pick is the J- Jalen Duran pick and the back yeah. pick. So uh, both of those guys going at it. So once again, make sure you guys subscribe, hit the notification bell. We will see you guys, if not tomorrow night, then Sunday night recapping the Wizards game and the other game they played this weekend. Hell to the Wizards. Peace. <laughs>